Zach, let's get back to the hotel. First Anna, then Becky, now Diane. I'm not looking forward to writing this investigation report. Agent Morgan. York. Do you have a moment? What is it, George? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Do you have any time later? Can't we just do it here? If possible, I'd like to go to a bar. Of course, we don't really have to. A bar? Now that sounds like a good idea. Zack, what do you think? We can go drinking with George, or turn him down and head back to the hotel. George, that scar on your cheek, where did you get it? This? Didn't I tell you? Well, it's not from work. I got it when I was a kid. A childhood injury. Tree climbing? I used to get a few scrapes myself climbing the big tree in our backyard. I used to climb it a lot. And fall out of it a lot. <laughs> this wasn't anything like that, though. It was my mother. She did it. I'm sorry, George. Don't worry. It's ancient history. The world is flooded with unreasonable violence. The strong overpower the weak, adults over children, men over women, and criminals over their victims. I have no memories of my father. He left before I knew him. My mother would hit me every time I asked why. And it didn't stop there. If I ate too slow, left my shoes scattered around, TV volume too loud, she found reasons to hit me. Hit me bad. The worst was what she called the tree punishment. She'd whip my back with these thin tree branches like a whip. Tree punishment was definitely the worst, I tell you. Just hearing those words used to make me shiver and want to pass out. And that's why I didn't want to show you those scars on my back. Every time after the tree punishment, she'd always say the same thing. This is hurting the tree more than it is hurting you. And me, being a naive, dumb kid, I believed her. I went to the woods to apologize to the trees. I kept asking myself, why is she hurting me this way? I thought long and hard about it. In the end, I just figured I'm weaker than her. That's why. It's the law of mother nature at work. The strong eat the weak. But now, you have the power to protect the weak. That's right. Perhaps I should thank my mother for guiding me into this line of work. York. I've been an arrogant fool, haven't I? And if it weren't for me, both Becky and Diane would still be alive. I could have saved them both. You know, it's almost like they died because of me. You're out of your mind. I invited you to this bar for a drink. But I guess this bar is my confession chamber, and I wanted you to listen. And to tell you, well, you must already hate me for causing all these problems and not following your orders. York, I'm sorry. I'll follow your orders from now on. You'll have my total cooperation. George, you've been as cooperative as you can be. You even invited an FBI guy to a bar for drinks. You've done a good job protecting this town. And the folks here respect you for that. Nobody can blame you for anything. 
Thanks. I do feel a little better. Hey, Carol. Becky is dead. Diane, too. We've got Nick in custody as a suspect. Nick didn't do it. Ah, I know. Carol, you took a locket from Diane, didn't you? A locket with this mark on it. I'm busy, gotta go. Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack. Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys.
I think George likes you, but he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay. He did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. Or I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but all in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. I'm sure she's very proud of you. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes? Please, don't lie to us, okay? I won't. Don't worry. I won't. There was another really bad one around this time of year. Three years ago. Remember, Zach? Yes, that's right. That one. Multiple homicide, same M.O. Across Utah, Colorado, and Missouri. The victims were all average married housewives. But after being run over so many times by a car, they didn't look human. Five victims in two months in the three states. The way he killed them was always the same. But aside from that, there was nothing that linked the victims together. Well, they, they were all married. But age, race, nothing else matched up. Tire marks and fragments of paint ID'd the car that was used. That's where things got really tricky. The perpetrator used a 1993 model Cadillac Elante as a weapon. It was registered in the name of one senator... No. I don't feel like talking about this anymore. That senator's basement. I wish I could forget what I saw there.
Zack, let's go over our progress. From what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery, which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim, Diane, was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zach? That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was someone near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick, who was knocked out in the entrance, and one other. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? That's right, Casey. We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. Casey's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Casey up in the basement. Now what did Casey hear when he was locked up? That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. We saw the rest. Zack, do you think that Nick is our serial killer? Me too. Usher sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket, which is in Carol's possession the man with the tattooed back, and the upside-down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow. Zach, what did you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Emily? What's going on? Do you know what time it is? I'm... I'm sorry. I... I couldn't sleep, so... I was drinking alone. My mother was a very kind woman. She always smiled so brightly, baked cakes and cookies every day. She'd say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me and he was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and I remember he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up. And 
it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Mm, can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. Who's Zach? <laughs> um, Zach is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. Yeah. He's my only friend. What kind of person is he then? Well, I, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me, and we discuss everything. When did you become friends? A long time ago. Back when I was a child. I was seven. I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes, so I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zach's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zack will get angry. That's a sad story, but I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Oh, oh yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. There might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? Maybe <laughs> hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, if it comes to that, let it be a fair fight. Agreed? Tom!
Thomas! 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 Let me out of here! Come on! Please! Just for a moment! One second! Hate it! Here, Thomas! I think I'm going mad. I know you're there! Come on! Please! Thomas! 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 Open this door. There is no turning back. You still want to enter? I do. It's better than staying here. Very well then. Off you go, Mr. Look carefully, boy. At times, we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you 